So here we are at the fish hatchery. You can see the people with the things, and there's our teacher and everybody. Yeah, there you go. So we need to get out of the van so we can go touch some fish. <laughs> Everybody knows that. Uh, we do have a spawning station set up right here. Um, the two white tanks that are right here uh, have an anesthetic in them that will put the fish to sleep. And any fish we bring in from the outside tanks will go into the, uh, the white bins and then the fish will go to sleep. They'll go belly up. Kind of like they're dead, but they're not dead. They are breathing, they are alive, they're fine. Uh, if they stay in there too long, however, it can actually kill them. So we're going to go nice and slow. We don't need, need to worry about killing any fish today. Um, so everything we bring in is going to go in the white tanks. This black tank that's here in the center will have just the males. So if we bring a fish in, if you look at it, you say, okay, that's a male. Just move it into the black tank. Don't squeeze it. Don't do anything else. Just move it into there uh, until we actually get some eggs. We need to have eggs before we can have uh, sperm. Uh, let's see, the tanks on the outside are just recovery tanks. They just have clean water. They don't have anything else in them except for the air stones. Once the fish go in there, they'll recover. They'll wake up just like nothing ever happened to them. Um, when we uh, grab the fish from outside, no more than two at a time in a net. Uh, you get too many fish together in a net, they'll actually beat each other up. And they can actually uh, crush the eggs inside the females. Which we definitely don't want that to happen. Um, the fish that we're playing with today are um, hybrid Arctic char brook trout hybrids. There we go. I don't know to say it like that. Uh, they are the sixth generation of the cross. Um, so they're, it took us almost 15 to 18 years to get to the point of having this generation. Um, so they're kind of a, a special fish for us, so we don't want to uh, hurt them too much. Um, First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to pick up the fish and also how to sex them. It should be fun. I guess they should be barred up there. No, these are ones that uh, we're, in the, we're in the, with the mail tank for some reason. Cool. Sorry, Bill's out here. <laughs> you can go ahead and measure out that one. That should be okay. I think it's yeah, ten efforts. Ten efforts are good. So what's going to happen is these fish will be slightly get a little lethargic as they stay in the water a little bit longer. Usually after about a minute or so, they'll actually roll over. Now some of them, some of the bigger ones especially, they'll actually use their pectoral fins to actually hold themselves upright. So what you want to do every once in a while when a fish is in there and you think it's been in there too long is actually try to flip it over. Uh, if you can flip it over and it's on the belly, belly up and it doesn't try to swim or struggle, then uh, it's asleep. So the uh, I'm right-handed. Mike, you could have just measured them with that water in there. So just dump them back into a bowl. Those are eggs. And then just strain them off at the end. Um, two fingers around the base of the tail is what you're going to do. The hand on the tail won't move. It doesn't matter if it's your right hand or your left hand. Me, I like to grab it with the left. I know Mark likes to grab it with the right. doesn't matter as long as you grab the fish and you don't drop it. Um, so this fish is probably the sleep. So we're going to try to just roll it over. No, it's actually trying to kick a little bit. So if the fish is uh, still awake, you do want it to go to sleep, otherwise it will tense up the muscles and won't let the eggs come out nice and freely. Um, and we're actually going to have multiple people kind of helping the person that's actually holding the fish. So it's actually a three-person job. We have a spawner. The spawner is going to be the person actually physically holding the fish and grabbing the fish. Uh, we're going to have a basket holder. We have one basket here. And where's my other one? Oh, yeah. they oh there they are. We have my two baskets, one for each side. Any female that we get, we are going to try to squeeze the eggs over top of one of those baskets. Matt, pull one of those up. Just take them apart so they can actually see. Okay, it has a window screen in the bottom of it. What that's going to do is let any blood, ovarian fluid, water drip off the eggs. Uh, the reason why we want them to drip off the eggs is we want to keep them actually dry as long as we can. Um, the micro pile. A small hole that's inside the egg where the sperm will penetrate will close up after being submerged in the water. So 
So once the eggs are submerged in water for more than five minutes, that will close and they won't close. So we're just going to keep them as dry as we can as long as we can. Another person is going to be the dryer. And Matt will demonstrate all these as soon as this fish actually goes to sleep. So all you got to do is just roll it over. So this fish isn't, isn't trying to swim. So everybody get up close. I'm going to have the back of the fish facing me. Watch how he picks it up. I'm going to grab two fingers around the base of the tail. Okay, right now around the conal peduncle. The other hand, just like a backhoe, goes over the head of the fish, grabs it, picks it up, and you bring it, well, if you have an apron on, to your apron. And you're going to use your apron as a wall to hold the fish. You don't want to be trying to hold it out here because if you try to squeeze, you're going to drop it every time. Okay? So up against your body, and your elbow needs to be tucked against your side. So this fish is actually going to rest mostly on your forearm and wrist. Okay, so you're going to be in this kind of position. You want to cradle it, and you want to be comfortable holding the fish. You don't want to be holding the fish way up here or you know way down here. Just whatever's comfortable for you. Now, first thing is we're going to wipe it off. So we just take a paper towel, wrap it around both sides, and peel it off. We're not actually wiping the fish. Okay, we don't want to take the slime off. So if we just wrap the paper towel around both sides, it gets the water and not all the slime. And then the person with the basket is going to make the person with the fish comfortable. So that's good, good uh, height for me. And you're going to start at the base, right here, right around the tuppy, the little appendage where the eggs will pop out. And with your uh, tail hand, you're actually going to twist your wrist just a little bit so that it makes a little J in the base of the tail. Okay, you're not you're not going up and down with it. Okay, you want to go backwards with it. And if the fish starts to struggle, you can put it back to sleep. Um, and if you think you're going to drop the fish, just put it back in the water. And if it does slide out of your hands, hip check it. Do whatever you need to do so it hits water, not concrete. All right, with two fingers, my index finger and thumb on both sides of the fish, what I'm going to do is gently squeeze, actually squeeze together, and then also push down towards the vent. So it's kind of a two-part motion. You're squeezing a little bit of pressure, and then just squeezing those eggs down towards the vent area, or stuffy. Okay, and what you want to do is just try to get as many of the eggs out of the bottom first, and then eventually once that area kind of loses all of its eggs, start taking longer longer uh, strokes. And this whole body cavity is going to be full of eggs. Bruno, right? Right. We do need to keep track of ripes and hards. Not every single fish in the tank today will give us eggs. So we just need to keep track so we know how many more fish are in the tank to uh, actually spawn. Once you think you're done, once you get to three squeezes and no more eggs are coming out, we're going to stop. So we're going to go one, two, and three. We're going to say this fish is now empty. Take a look at it. Flat tire. You see how much that all of this whole area was just nothing but eggs. Now, wow. before, I should have actually showed you before I squeeze it. Uh, if you look at this fish, really kind of not a lot of color, just kind of a white and gray, nothing too special about it. But it was really round in shape. If you look at its nose, it's a uh, pretty short, rounded nose. You want to see that? Short, rounded nose. And that is a female. Once we're done with the females, we can just put them into the outside tanks for them to recover. They'll recover in about a minute or two. Now that we have good eggs in our, in our basket, we're actually going to take those two baskets apart and transfer the eggs into the silver bowl that's right here on the table. The reason why we do that, the next fish I grab might not have good eggs, it might have crappy, nasty eggs, and we don't want to mix them together. So after each fish, you want to get the eggs out. So all you got to do is just tip the bowl over, use a feather, and just scrape them down the side and, and into the bowl. Once they're in the bowl, we can just cover them up with cardboard. How do you know if that uh, the color usually. Uh, if they're really clear, they're they're no good. Or if you see a white kind of a bullseye, kind of a spot on them, that also means that they're not good. So the eggs, once the uh, eggs release from the skein or the ovaries inside the fish, they're only good for about a week to week and a half. So we have only have a week and a half period or so to actually get them out. Otherwise, they'll actually go bad. And the fish will not release any of those bad eggs if we don't take them out manually. 
So if we don't actually take them out, the fish won't release them on, our, on their own. Um, and some of these fish will have eggs from last year. They're going to look like contact lenses, kind of like tacos, you know, they fold up. They'll be white usually, just kind of look like mush. Uh, those are actually probably eggshells from last year. So the female reabsorbs the nutrients, just not the shells. All right, I think in this fish, you can kind of see the, he's going to struggle a little bit. Uh, this is a male. If you look at the colors, very deeply colored on the belly, uh, nice dark red, sometimes it'll be orange. Um, if you look at it, it's not very round, but he's kind of flattened on each side, but he's got a deep body. And if you look at his nose, if I can hold him without a little <coughs> too much, he's got kind of more of a triangular, beak-like nose, a little bit longer, a little bit elongated kind of nose. You can kind of see that. Okay, any males that we do catch, we're just going to put in the black tank until we actually have uh, a batch of eggs. Everyone understand? Mm -hmm. All right, so we can get started. Spawn on both sides, basket holders and wipers on both sides. Let's start. The stuff is right there. Do it. This is how we get all the eggs out. Look it up and see it. White. Don't worry about those two. Don't touch those two. Don't touch those two. Don't touch those two. Only do the tigers. You guys mess with outside. That's what they're trying to find. That is the charred one. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what they're trying to find. 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 Obviously, this was a female. Do we need more females? Yeah, we need more fish. I don't even know what it is. Is it like a water cooler? Have we recorded this fish yet? No. Right? We got there. We already got this one. Okay. All right. They do three pumps of nothing now. I'm thinking of it. Right now. One more. One more. If you get rid of shape, um, yeah. you get rid of shape, that usually helps. Try one last time. You guys can take some of these out of here. There. Wow, well, this one had a lot of eggs. That, oh. <laughs> there was just a couple that came out. Give her one more. Yeah, she's done. Lots of eggs. No, these are fun over here. Yeah, uh, bring two more in. Right now I'm working as a dryer. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Has anyone not spawned yet? This is our leader on your fish. Got it. You yeah, have it? She's going to spawn next to us. Okay. Nice nails. Okay, so these eggs are going to be dry spawned. So we're going to dry spawn for, say, three to five minutes. <laughs> you want to expound on that? Um, we don't need to stir them up too much, just enough to get the sperm and the eggs to touch. Uh, the reason why we dry spawn first is the uh, sperm is water activated. The eggs themselves are still kind of wet, uh, so it condenses sperm. Hey! <laughs> Shut up! Um, what it will do is condense sperm and egg. Increases your fertilization rate. After the three to five minutes, we'll add a little bit of uh, incubator water, which is the same temperature as our incubator, uh, which is 45 degrees, and then they will wet spawn. After that three to five minute period of wet spawning, no more eggs are going to fertilize. Uh, there's only about five minutes for the uh, micro pile before it closes, and the wet spawn will basically be that three to five minutes. So micro pile a is a little hole in the egg. So it's a pretty uh, quick process, really.
Say hi. <laughs> Alright, so the very first batch of eggs you guys did are right here in this one bowl. Uh, here's the feather. I need someone to come up and start counting them. Alright, there you go. You need to count all these. What we'll do is dump them all in this tray. You're going to count them all one at a time. How's that sound? Don't do it. Sounds like a really stupid thing to do. Okay, we don't count each one of these one at a time. Because uh, you would be here until probably next week. And uh, since it's break, I don't want to hear. Um, <laughs> so what we're going to do is a volumetric approach. We're going to take all the eggs that are here, we're going to dump them into a uh, large graduated cylinder, figure out our total volume of eggs. Um, okay, stop stirring. I hope I can do this without completely spilling them all over the place. Whoa! <laughs> Pardon the shaking of the camera, but I'm, my hands are freezing right now. <laughs> So we spilled a few, so I gotta put them back in the bowl, straighten them all out. Can you count how many milliliters in that jar, please? So there are 1,000 in there. So 1,820 milliliters. Okay, so that's our total volume of eggs between, or actually just with this one particular bat. What we're going to do now is just take a small subsample of that, anywhere between 10 and uh, 20 milliliters. Those eggs we will actually count one at a time. What we're trying to figure out is the number of eggs per milliliter. Dump some more water out. How many mills did you have there, Brent? All together, 1820 <coughs> in this batch. So I have. Uh, we'll say 16. So I've got 16 milliliters of eggs in this jar. Now you're going to have to count all the extra things. <coughs> so using the feather, you do actually have to count all these eggs. Now. The easiest way to do it is to take a small batch of them, pull them to the side, count those, pull them to a corner, and keep doing that until you get your final count. There you go. Can we dump these toads, Brent? Yes, as long as the uh, there's no more fish in them, no. we can go ahead and dump them. Down the drain, guys. Yeah. We can go down the drain, or we can even, if you want, we can take them over in the grass outside and we're going to go ahead. Separate right up. Just pop it apart. Basically, all she's doing is counting the eggs. The whole thing together goes in the back corner. Okay, I just want to make sure it's not going to get torn apart. You're okay. Yeah, I don't want it torn apart. So, this is kind of fun. go out. She is counting them. At least this time we won't be driving a half an hour in for work. So how many eggs uh, do people think are in, the, in these two jars? So what's the total number of eggs do people think are in these? 600. 600? Okay. These are the hybrids, yeah. 13,000. 13,000. That's a lot of eggs. Okay. All together. In those two big jars, not that's not what's in the pan. There's 23 a group of 10, so 234. How many? 234. All right, 234. <laughs>
234 divided by 16. There are 16.5 eggs per milliliter. 1,820. That's a lot of eggs. 30,030. 30,030 eggs? Holy, wow. So in between just these two jars right here are 30,000 eggs. It didn't take very long to get that many eggs out. That was only one tank. And that's only one tank, and we didn't even go through all the fish. And that's we only today between the morning. That's my teacher. So this morning's class took 28,000 eggs. So we've taken 58,000, almost 60,000 eggs from 5, 10, 50, 30, 30, 35, 42 females. So probably even less than that because we didn't do the second batch. Yep. So probably around 20 to 25 females gave us right around 50,000 eggs. So it doesn't take very many fish to be able to repopulate your hatchery. Hmm. So out of out of these eggs, probably half of them will probably hatch Aww. due to natural mortality and everything else. That's still more than I can actually handle um, at, at one time. So there's there's uh, a lot of eggs that these fish produce, even though they don't survive as well. Um, you know, you take 50%, maybe you're losing half. Well, yeah, you might be losing half, but when you start with 10 times as many, uh, half isn't so bad. No. The numbers that we just mentioned, you're going to have to have in your lab report. Uh, so he's going to write it up on the board. 16. Can I have that notebook on the copy thing behind you? Oh, this will be in the lab report? Good. Just for this afternoon, just for today that we did. Do you need to know the count number two? Um, 234. That's a lot of no? Do you need to know this? Uh, sure. Yep. So there were 234 eggs. 264. I'm sorry. 264? 264. That's what happened with pen and paper. Wow. Look at all this. I have a question. What is your question? Um, when you guys like sell the eggs, like how much do you usually sell them for? <laughs> each egg is five cents each. Oh wow! So once, and we'll we'll sell them at two different stages. We would sell them now as a green egg, which mm -hmm. is freshly spawned, or as an eyed egg. When they have, when, when you can see the little, their when eyes. When you see the little eye spots of the embryo, okay. um, that's normally when we'd sell them because they're pretty hard. Do they at go that up stage. in price? No, they'll stay at five cents. Oh, wow. And usually when they're green, we actually bring the price down just a little bit because a lot of these won't live to that point of, mm -hmm. of eye up. So if we wait to eye up, they're five cents. Usually if they're a little bit less, or if they're uh, not eyed up and they're green, fresh eggs, mm -hmm. we charge a little bit less. For them. And it also depends on how many people want and, and everything else. Too, so. um, okay, one other thing. I came around here more in the late summer mm -hmm. and... There was a um, a woman who came by while we were looking at the fish, and some guy brought out some fish in a bag for her. When they're fish, how much do you sell them for? When whole fish, straight out of the tank, with all the guts on them and, and everything else, it's three dollars <laughs> a pound. Oh. Uh, fillets, if we want to fillet, are six ninety nine a pound. Ooh. And gutted and clean, so basically we would take the internal organs out and take the gills out of the fish, are three ninety nine. Oh, okay. Thank you. Not a problem. Sweetness. I am done. Bye, everybody.